In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We heard in the first lesson from 2 Isaiah, in chapter 40, verse 3. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Then about a hundred years after that prophecy, the prophet Malachi proclaims these words of God. In chapter 3 of Malachi, verse 1, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. In Mark's Gospel, we just heard that proclamation. The author of Mark's Gospel combines those two prophets' words, second Isaiah and Malachi, with a very specific intention or purpose. And that is to highlight that John is in the wilderness. John is that messenger. It is the voice that is in the wilderness. John is the messenger, the precursor to the Messiah. And so when it comes time to identify Jesus in Mark's Gospel, there's no confusion. He's not the messenger. He is the Word. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. We hear in Mark, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. There's the Malachi prophecy. Who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, and hear this carefully, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. That's a little different than what we actually hear in Isaiah. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. For Isaiah, it is important that that preparation occurs in the wilderness. Not so much for Mark's purposes. And that's okay. It doesn't change our theology. But I want for our purposes today to reflect on the theology found in 2 Isaiah here. In chapter 40, in this section of Isaiah. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. If we were biblical literalists, we would have to travel to the Mojave Desert or somewhere in order to have our Advent season, in order to prepare if we were reading Isaiah in that way. But I don't think we need to either read Isaiah that way or travel to the desert to have a meaningful Advent or preparation in this season. What if wilderness was found in our day-to-day lives? I think wilderness is an apt image for this season, for this Advent season. In the wilderness, one can become disoriented or lose his or her way, not know which direction, coming or going. I think so is true. That is also true of this hustle and bustle season we are in to get everything done that we need to get done. We can lose our orientation. The wilderness can be frightening, scary place, an unknown place. I'm glad someone else in our house does the Christmas shopping because shopping at this time of year is also frightening, a bit scary. 
On a more sobering note, we just finished at St. Thomas a series on mental health and mental health wellness during the holidays, preparing for these sometimes difficult times we have. Meeting with family members and navigating the complicated relationships we have. Psychological, emotional wilderness of stresses and strains and the good fullers, uh, if you came to the sessions, explained the difference between stress and strain psychologically. What if wilderness, what if the wilderness was a place apart from creature comforts, a place apart from the, the ready access to resources or privilege? And then we heard, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. What if the wilderness was something outside or experiences outside of our comfort zones? And we heard the words, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. What if the wilderness was the loneliness that many feel, illnesses in our lives, regret, depression. And then we heard in the wilderness, in all of that, prepare the way of the Lord. What if the wilderness was our sinful and broken and violent and greedy world? And then we heard, in the wilderness, in all of that, prepare the way of the Lord. What if the wilderness were the conditions of hunger and disease and injustice and poverty and oppression? And then we heard the words, in the wilderness, in all of that, prepare the way of the Lord. I'd like us to imagine that first Advent season, although it wouldn't have been called Advent. That first season of preparing for the coming of the Lord, as we are doing in remembrance again this year, as always. That first Advent season, a young girl, great with child, and her older spouse, take to the road and travel by foot from Nazareth south about 75 or 80 miles to Bethlehem. Away from the comforts of home, away from their families and friends. And if tradition is accurate, it's not in the Bible, but our tradition speaks of that woman great with child Traveling on a donkey. We have someone great with child right now with us, and we're going to celebrate that greatness after this service. She knew I was going to pick on her. <laughs> Jessica, do you think you'd want to travel 75 miles by foot and on a donkey? Great with child? I don't think so. We have a parent at the, in the day school who was invited to get on the bus with the students. Also great with child, due around the same time, I think just one day different than Jessica, and she looked at us and said, no way. <laughs> and nor was she going to get on the, the float, uh, the Christmas parade float, uh, with the children, um, great with child. That first Advent season, they find shelter among the animals outside of the safety, the shalom, as we talked about last Wednesday, outside of the safety or the peace or the shalom of the city walls. That first Advent season, 
that first preparing for the coming of the Lord, among the outcasts, shepherds were thought to be, at the time, undesirable folk to be around. The shepherds, the poor, the outcasts, a sort of wilderness. A wilderness this couple was in as they prepared the way of the Lord. And so I invite us to imagine our own wildernesses as, as we all have them. What is the wilderness in your own life? And the challenge is not to be distracted by the hustle and bustle of the season and run from that wilderness. But Isaiah challenges us to go towards that wilderness, to enter into that wilderness in our lives. And from there, prepare the way of the Lord. Indeed, our Advent call, virtue of the word Advent, is to prepare. Second Isaiah suggests to us that first, we need to enter the wilderness. The church used to present Advent very much like the Lenten season, a penitential season, so we still have some of the leftovers in some of our churches, the purple or violet candles and vestments and hangings. But then liturgists, my brother being one of them, liturgists told us, no, no, it's not a penitential season. It's about preparation. And so we de-emphasize the, the penitential nature of the season. We changed from purple to, to blue in some churches. Not wrong, just different emphasis. But I wonder if the church in her wisdom back then might have got it right in terms of Isaiah. First, repent. First, enter into our wilderness and then prepare. And that is good news. And why is that good news? That is good news because when we prepare in the wilderness, that is where we meet the Lord. There the Lord remains. The life of Jesus, our Savior, bears that out. The life of Jesus gives witness to that. Jesus remained close to the poor and the outcasts. Jesus remained close to the sinners and those undesirables. Jesus remained close to the outcasts and the least in our world. I say, if that is where Jesus is, that is where I want to be. That is where I hope all of us want to be. Where Jesus is. Where our Lord is found. In the wilderness. We're reminded in John's Gospel, Jesus prays, where I am, there also will be my servant. In the wilderness, let us prepare. Prepare to encounter the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.